Whenever we fly out of gliding range of our home airfield, we run the risk of landing out. Whilst field landings obviously require greater caution and care than a landing at our home field, they should not be considered as dangerous or difficult. Like many things in gliding, the more we do, the easier it becomes. They are far less of a hurdle if they are first taught and practiced in a motor glider with a suitably qualified and experienced instructor. Even this has its drawbacks, however, and a single session can at best only provide a snapshot of what fields are available in the immediate vicinity of the home airfield at any one time of the year. To become competent at field landings, it is necessary to have looked at many fields in different areas and various seasons. This presentation sets out to do just that. It is based on the experience and knowledge of seasoned cross-country pilots who between them have landed in hundreds of fields. We will look at a variety of fields and where possible revisit those fields at different times of the year to see how they have changed with the seasons. Most of the fields looked at will be in the south of the UK, but the same principles apply wherever we fly. What will change with geographical location will be the average size of field available and the proportion of crop fields to grazing fields. As we change from mainly arable farming to largely stock farming, the fields tend to become smaller with pasture becoming more prevalent. Let's begin by looking at the process of field selection. We generally choose fields in the order of size, allied with colour and wind direction which we'll look at later, then slope and finally surface. We do it in that order because from the height above the ground that we should start to closely consider the field landing, say 1,500 feet or so, we can clearly see the size and colour of a great many fields in the immediate area. You should be aware of the wind direction and should be able to pick up on clues that will give an indication of the surface wind. We cannot, however, easily discern the slope of the ground until we are closer to it. In other words, lower. Finally, we can begin to pick up the detail of the surface only when we get down to 1,000 feet or so. Along with surface detail and suitability, we can also check for likely obstructions that might get in our way and plan the circuit accordingly. With practice, it is possible to speed up the process of selection, enabling a much quicker assessment and a more certain selection. Let's look at some fields. 